This video covers the recommended end cable entry procedures for AFL wrapping tube cable. Some WTC designs are manufactured with multiple spiderweb ribbon binder groups. Each of the binder groups can be identified by using the same color code sequence as specified in the TIA 598D optical fiber color coding specification. Each binder group contains 6 or 12 groups of SWR for a total of 72 or 144 fibers as shown in this table. All individual ribbons in the binder group are additionally marked with black ring markings that indicate SWR 1 through 6 or 1 through 12 for easy identification. The tools and materials that may be used to perform the WTC end preparation procedures are shown here. These materials are typically considered to be standard tools by field technicians for entering armored and non-armored cables. As a standard safety practice, always use cut-resistant or heavy leather gloves to prevent an accidental injury during the cable prepping process. Determine the actual length of the cable required for the installation in accordance with the splicing closure manufacturer. Mark the measured location using vinyl tape or a marker. Place the mark approximately 3 to 5 inches further than the required length. Place the cable cutter or tubing cutter around the outer jacket approximately 3 to 5 inches from the free end of the cable being prepared. Carefully rotate the cutter around the cable jacket to score the outer surface. Take care not to cut through the armor layer under the outer jacket. Flex the jacket surface at the ring cut location until the outer armor breaks. This procedure will allow the outer jacket and inner core to be released. Remove the 3 to 5 inch portion of the outer jacket and armor from the free end. This process will expose the internal rip cords. Using splicing scissors or a cable knife, notch an entry point into the jacket and armor next to the two exposed outer jacket rip cords. Pull and insert each of the rip cords into the notches on each side of the cable. Wrap the rip cord around a non-sharp item like a screwdriver or Allen wrench to assist in the pulling process. Starting at one of the two sides, pull each ripcord individually, leaving approximately one inch between the ripcord and the specified entry mark. Pull the second ripcord until it is parallel to the first. Place the cable cutter or tubing cutter around the outer jacket at the original length marking. Carefully rotate the cutter around the cable jacket to score the outer surface. Take care to not cut through the armor layer under the outer jacket. Flex the jacket surface at the ring cut location. This process should separate the armor between the inner and outer jackets. Pull the rip cords until they're even with or slightly past the ring cut if grounding is required. Separate the two halves of the outer jacket and armor from the inner jacket. Cut the binder and remove the water blocking tape layer to expose the inner jacket. Place a mark on the inner jacket approximately 1 to 1.5 inches from the previous armored cut location. This marking will be used to identify the jacket removal location. The two inner jacket rip cords are positioned 180 degrees apart on opposite sides of the inner cable jacket. The rip cord locations are identified by a slight ridge in the inner jacket. Place the cable cutter or tubing cutter around the outer jacket approximately 3 to 5 inches from the free end of the cable being prepared. Carefully rotate the cutter around the cable jacket to score the outer surface. Flex the cable at the ring cut to fracture the fiber reinforced plastic rods. Remove the outer sheath and expose the water blocking tape and rip cords. Unlike other cable designs, the FRP rods are embedded within the cable jacket and are not required to be secured within the splice closure. Standard procedures for securing the outer jacket are still required per the closure manufacturer's specification. Using splicing scissors or a cable knife, notch an entry point into the cable jacket next to the two exposed rip cords. Pull and insert each of the rip cords into the notches on each side of the cable. 
wrap the ripcord around a non-sharp item like a screwdriver or allen wrench to assist in the pulling process. Pull both inner jacket ripcords to approximately 3 inches from the previous armored outer jacket ring cut location. Place the cable or tubing cutter around the inner jacket at the previously identified 1 to 1.5 inch access mark. Carefully rotate the cutter around the cable's jacket to score the outer surface and embedded fiberglass reinforced plastic rods. Pull both jacket ripcords until they are even with the inner ring cut location. Individually flex the jacket halves to snap the FRP rods within the jacket. Using a pair of diagonal cutting pliers, cut and remove each side of the inner jacket from the fiber's protective wrap. Before exposing the optical bundles, make sure that the prepping surface is clean, dry, and free of debris and potential catch points. Carefully open and peel back the white, water-blocking wrap from around the fiber bundle groups. Cut and remove the entire wrap except for one to two inches on each side, with the remaining wrap folded over itself, covering the cable's jacket edge. With the use of electrical tape, secure the wrap to the end of the outer jacket. Separate and remove the water blocking binders that are interwoven between the SWR bundles. Identify that the number of binder groups are correct. Each group should be bound by two color-coded binders that are designed to hold the individual groups together for ease of handling and identification. Once the fiber groups are identified and secured, remove 3 to 5 inches of fiber from each of the individual fiber binder groups. This process will remove any fiber that may have been damaged during the cable prepping procedure. The WTC is manufactured with up to 24 individual fiber bundles. Each of the binder groups will contain 72 or 144 optical fibers bound by two standard color-coded binders. Each binder contains 6 or 12 spiderweb ribbons which contain 12 fibers each. All groups of ribbons are ring marked between 1 and 12 for easy identification. Each spiderweb ribbon contains 12 fibers that are color coded blue through aqua. Each fiber can be individually separated for single fusion splicing or placed together and mass fusion spliced as a ribbon. If grounding the cable's armor is a requirement, pull the ripcord slightly past the ring cut as described previously. All grounding requirements should be specified by the customer and the splice closure instructions.